2016, a year to consolidate, strengthen what you have, don't lose what you have, don't let someone take away what is yours, don't lose ground you have gained, prepare to transition to the next level. So the word of the Lord for 2016, let's see how many of us remember it. It's a year to consolidate. It's a year to consolidate. Strengthen what you have. Strengthen that. And be uh, based that on uh, the key passage we use for Psalm 84 verses 5 through 7. Uh, and I'll just read that for us again. It says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, the valley of Baca simply refers to a valley of tears. It's a valley full of thorns, which is not easy to get through. Um, there, there are, it's, it's difficult, there is labor and all pain over there. But as you pass through that valley, that valley of tears, the Bible says you, you make it a spring, you make it a pleasant place. It turns over into a, a, a place filled with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. So here the Bible is talking about your life and mine. Us people who love the Lord, who our strength is in God, our heart is set on pilgrimage. We want to make our journey through life in order to appear before God. Our focus is very clear. We want to stand before God. Now our journey may take us to the valley of Baca, but God's grace is upon us. He helps us turn that into a pleasant place nevertheless. But here's the key. It says that they go from strength to strength. So God's intent for each of us as we go through life is to go from strength to strength. From one place of strength to another place of strength. Go from strength to strength. But we made the statement that in order for us to go from strength to strength, we must learn to consolidate. We must consolidate. And that's the emphasis. That's the word of the Lord for us for 2016. That it's a year to consolidate. And to consolidate means to make something stronger. To bring strength in. To bear in our lives. It also involves the idea of bringing many different things. Bringing them all together in a synergy. So that together there is greater strength than the individual components. And so we need to bring things together so that we can consolidate. So we said in 2016... Strengthen your hold on what you have. Raise up your defenses and secure what is yours. Solidify your standing, making yourself firm and unshakable. Do this in every area of your life. So I want you to take some time. I want all of us to take some time in these early, early days of the new year, 2016, saying, how can I consolidate spiritually? How can I Bring things together to be stronger professionally or if you're a student in, 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 your, in your education, in your academics. Uh, how can you bring things together and, and, and consolidate and, and make yourself stronger? Put yourself in a position of strength. If you're a business owner, if you are uh, heading a department, if, or whatever you're doing, consolidate. And so think through on it. Uh, make some plans together on how you're going to consolidate, how you're going to um, uh, make things stronger in your life and secure what you have and solidify your standing. Now, the opposite of consolidate is to act, to scatter, to act in a very random fashion, in a disorderly manner. You're doing di many different things. They're not really connected. And so what happens? In the end, you only weaken and you decrease. Instead of becoming stronger and moving upwards, you only end up, uh, in a weaker position than you began with. And that's the opposite of consolidating. So bringing things together and strengthening yourself, we're acting on you know, a random fashion. There is no focus, no order. And therefore, we scatter and we disperse. And it only leaves us weakened. So we have mentioned this, that it's, 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 uh, it's important to consolidate. And uh, I also said, consolidate whatever you have, even the little you have. Sometimes some of us may be saying, you know, look, I don't have a whole lot to consolidate. My life is pretty simple. I just have one thing to do. That's good. But even in that one area, consolidate. Make yourself stronger. Amen? 
And don't despise even the small things you have. Maybe what you have today is a small beginning of a, of a business or the small beginning of, a, of, a, of an opportunity that came your way. You've just started off on that. Uh, or maybe it's a, it's a, new, a new direction in your career. You've stepped into it and it's in your beginning in a very small way. You know, whatever it might be in your life, even if it is small, even if it seems insignificant, strengthen yourself in it. Because God sees faithfulness in little things. And in the kingdom of God, our stewardship of little things positions us for greater things. Amen? How you handle your little things will determine what will happen when you have a whole lot more. will determine whether or not you get a whole lot more. And, I, and I, you know, I took this very seriously even in my own life. I remember when I used to lead Bible studies with two or three people come. I said, God, I will be there. There are times when I've preached to an empty hall. Serious. The hall was empty. I preached anyway. Why? I said, God, I am so committed to serving you. Even if nobody shows up, I'm here, I'm going to preach. That's it. I'm committed. I'm not going to go back on this. So the point is that no matter what you're given to do, you demonstrate your faithfulness. You consolidate. You stay with it. You build it. Bring it together. You focus. You don't give up. And as God sees your faithfulness, he's going to reward you. He'll promote you. He'll set you in. Uh, uh, irresponsible for what is even more. So consolidate. How do, now let's just talk about why consolidate and how do we do it. And I'll just go through this message very quickly. Why do we, why do we need to consolidate? Number one, so you don't lose what you already have. Whatever you God's already given to you, bring it together. Tighten your hold on it. Don't lose what you already have. Right? And whether it's in every area of your life, strengthen. You don't want to lose what, you've, what, you've, what God's given to you right now. And especially concerning spiritual things, consolidate spiritual truth. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Let us give the more earnest heed to the things that we have, heard, lest at any time we let them slip. Pay close attention to things you've learned. There are things that I've learned, maybe I learned them 30 years ago, but I go back to it. Revise, review, refresh that into my heart. Why? I need to consolidate those truths. Make sure they're still alive and burning in me. And we need to do that. Don't um, consolidate so that you don't lose what you have. Number two, um, why do we consolidate? So that you don't let someone take away what is yours. You don't want somebody to come in and steal what God has entrusted to you. It's in your hands. You're a steward of it. If you close your eyes, go to sleep, thinking it will stay there, and you wake up, you find that somebody's come and taken away what God has put in your Don't let that happen. We also know that there is an enemy, and that's his main job. He, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And usually the thief comes when we are unaware of it. He's not going to send you an email saying, I'm coming tomorrow at 10 o'clock, be ready. <laughs> no, he comes when we are unaware, when we are asleep, when we think it's, when we think everything is okay. That's when he breaks in. That's when he comes to take away what God's entrusted to us. So consolidate so that you don't lose what God has put in your hands. Secure that. The enemy comes to steal the word. The word that we've been hearing. The word that God's been putting in our hearts. The enemy wants to take it away. Why? Because if the word remains and it, it, it produces, we are going to become that much more useful and effective for the kingdom of God. But if he can steal that word out, the very thing that God wants to work with and through your, in your life and mind, the word, he takes it away, then we are losing out on what God's depositing in our life. So protect the word. Go back to the word of God. Stay with the word. Number three, why consolidate? So that we don't lose ground we have gained. Now you've, you've made progress to a certain level. Don't lose out on that. 
consolidate where you've come. So whether it's in your profession, whether it's in your spiritual life, uh, in every area, consolidate the ground you've gained. Uh, we use this, um, the story of King Benadad and, uh, and King Ahab of, uh, of is Israel. This is from 1 Kings, the 20th chapter. In 1 Kings chapter 20, we have this, this uh, story of Ahab, who was the king of Israel at that time. And uh, uh, this chapter, uh, in the beginning of the chapter, we read about ben King Benadad, the king of Syria, who comes against Ahab. And at that time, the prophet comes to uh, King Ahab and says, Now, king, here's the enemy coming against you, but you go fight. God's going to give you the victory. Of course, King Benadad, the king of Syria, you know, he comes with, with a lot of uh, pride and he, he speaks all kinds of rude things against uh, uh, King Ahab. But the prophet encourages him. So they go out, they see great victory. And uh, King Ahab is very, you know, successful in that first battle. But then the prophet comes back to him and he says in 1 Kings chapter 20 and, and verse 21, he says, and uh, verse 21 says, the king of Israel went out and attacked the horses and chariots and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. Verse 22, and the prophet came to the king, king of Israel and said to him, go strengthen yourself. Take note and see what you should do. For in the spring of the year, the king of Syria will come up against you again. So he's saying, you know, you've got victory, but consolidate. Strengthen yourself. Sit down. Think through. What should you do? Because the king is, the enemy is going to come back again. See, some, we, sometimes when we have victories, we, we know we tend to forget the lessons we're supposed to take from those victories. We, we, we get so caught up in the celebration, in the excitement, in the thrill of the victory, we forget to consolidate those lessons. What did God teach me? What did I learn about God? What did I learn about walking with God? What were the key lessons that helped me gain this victory? You know, those are the things you need to sit down and write. Journal it if you want to. Or some way, somehow record it in your spirit. So that you don't lose those lessons that you've experienced through that victory. Every victory should prepare you for the next battle. You be, should be positioned. Put, put yourself in a better position to face Another battle. Because battles are sure to come. Are you all with me so far? Yeah. So consolidate that. And, and, and uh, 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 don't lose the ground you've gained. Now, what happened? Sure enough, the, in the spring of next year, King Benadad came at, and attacked King Ahab again. A second time. And uh, the prophet came and once again said, you know, you go, to, go into battle. God's going to give you the victory. He, he went out into battle. Sure enough, he, gave, he gained victory. But when he captured the king and some of his key soldiers, what did they do? They played a trick on Ahab. They flattered him. They came to him and said, Oh, king, we have heard that you and your people are very kind, very merciful people and all that. And they just flattered him. And so he said, Oh, yeah, we're supposed to be very kind, very merciful. So he let them go. The prophet comes back to King Ahab, and here's what he says in verse 42. Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, because you have let slip out of your hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore your life shall go for his life, and your people for his people. And the king went home very disappointed. I mean, he, he had the victory, he just didn't finish it. Three years later, Ahab died at the hands of the Syrians. The very people that he could have killed turned around and killed him, destroyed his life. He lost ground that he had gained. God had brought him so far in his victory, and he just let it slip through his hands. And I want to encourage you and I that don't, we shouldn't let that happen to us. Consolidate the victory God brought into your life. Don't lose ground. Number four, why should we consolidate? So that we are ready to transition to the next Level. When we consolidate, we are ready to move up. God takes us from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from one level of faith to another. But in order for us to move to the next level, we must consolidate. 
So consolidation is not inactivity. It's not like, you know, I sit down and do nothing. No, I'm very busy bringing together to bear all that God's put in my life so that I'm preparing for the next level, for the, for the growth, the expansion. Uh, consolidate everything you receive at each new level, the revelation, the anointing, the experience, the impartation, so that you can use that as your stepping stone into the next level in God. So let me quickly talk, talk to us about how do we consolidate? How do we uh, prepare ourselves to bring strength, to bring, all of the, bring everything together so that we can strengthen ourselves to move up? Number one, we said reflect on your victories. Victories that God has brought in your life. Take time to draw lessons from that. Reflect on your victories. Don't just, you know, like I said earlier, don't just enjoy the celebration. That's wonderful. But think through, what did I learn about God? What did I learn about walking by faith? What, what lessons can I take from these victories? That's what David did. When, when he conquered the lions and the bears, that prepared him to face Goliath. So you, you make a choice. You, make, you, you, you do your best to draw lessons out of every victory that you've gained. Secondly, learn from your struggles. So we all go through struggles in life. We all go through difficult things in life. But pause and say, God, what can I learn for this? Maybe there are things I need to change. Maybe there are things that I need to correct in my life. Maybe there are mistakes I made so I don't make them again. What can I learn? Learn from your when you and I can learn from our struggles, it puts us in a position of strength. The next time we face challenges, we know how to overcome. We know how to go through it. We know how to press past those things. Number three, refuse to tolerate what weakens you. So guard your life. Are there things that are weakening you? That are actually taking strength out of your life? Sometimes it could be Sin, sometimes it could be fear, sometimes it could be the wrong kind of thinking, the wrong ideas. These are things that are actually weakening us. Get rid of those things that weaken you so that you can move to a new level of strength. Are you with me so far this morning? Yes, in case your neighbor is sleeping, say, hey, this is not New Year's service. <laughs> this is not New Year's. All right, I'll be done soon. So, Refuse to tolerate what weakens you. We, we talked about the people of Israel, how they came so close to entering into the land of Canaan. They were on the east side of the river Jordan in a region called Kadesh. And God said, you know, I just want you to get, get, see, uh, search out the land and then cross over. But fear held them back. And they were on the banks of the river Jordan. But because of fear, they spent about 38 years just going around the mountain range around and around, round and around for 38 years. Fear kept them from stepping in to what God had for their lives. It just robbed them of the strength uh, they needed to cross over. So don't let fear hold you back. Don't let sin or any other thing in your life that hold you back from where God wants you to go. And number four, we said, do away with the unnecessary things. So sometimes in life, it may not be things that are wrong. It may be things that are right, but they're just not needed in your life. Need to get rid of it. Meaning you take a stock of things that you're doing. Where are you, where are you putting your time? How is your time being used? Or, or what are the kind of people you're spending time with? It may, it may not be very bad people, but if, if, if that is not necessarily helping you move towards where God wants you to, maybe you and I can make some changes so that we can move forward into greater fruitfulness. And Jesus put it like this in John 15 verse 2. Every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. So the pathway to greater fruitfulness is pruning. Pruning means cutting away things that are unnecessary. We get rid of those things. It takes us into greater fruitfulness. And lastly, we said, wait on the Lord for strength and wisdom. You ask the Lord, Lord, give me strength, give me wisdom. So that I can consolidate. How can I strengthen areas and things in my life? Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. So in closing here. Let me just remind you of the key points here. Let me close. 
in 2016, consolidate, strengthen what you have. Strengthen your hold on what you have. Raise up your defenses. Secure what is yours. Solidify your standing. Make yourself firm and unshakable. Don't lose what you have. Don't let someone take away what is yours. Don't lose ground you've gained. Get ready to transition to the next level. How do you do this? Reflect on your victories. Learn from your struggles. Refuse to tolerate what weakens you. Do away with the unnecessary things. And wait on the Lord for strength and wisdom. So I want to encourage you and I consolidate in 2016. Strengthen what God has put in your hand. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. We'll just call our worship team up. We'll take some time here just to wait on the Lord. As we take these few moments, and maybe you've already done this over the last couple of days, where you've taken time to reflect on what we heard as the word of the Lord, and you've prepared in your heart and mind, saying, okay, God, uh, these are the things I'm going to do to consolidate. So in case you've done that, then I just want to encourage you to take this time to pray and say, God, give me wisdom, give me strength to, to really see these things through. If you haven't done it, then as we stand here this morning, I want you to pray and say, God, show me areas that I need to consolidate in my life, that I need to strengthen. How can I do it? You take this time to pray and, and, and just interact with the Lord. Let him minister to your heart. Uh, let him speak to you, saying how you need to consolidate. So let's take this time just to wait on the Lord this morning, please. To accomplish what concerns me today, He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able. more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. He is able. Accomplish what concerns me today. He is able, more than able, to handle anything.
even as we stand before you the beginning of this year we just pray for the empowering of your Holy Spirit upon our lives Father that you will pour out the spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation God in each of our lives that by the wisdom of God we will know how to consolidate. We will know how to strengthen what we have. We know how to bring things together. So that God, we can prepare for the next level. That we'll be ready to move up into what you have in store for us. I pray for the release of wisdom and understanding, Father, in each of our lives. God, we will know how to order things in our lives. We will know how to let go of what we need to let go. We will know how to set aside things that, we need, that need to be set aside so that we can consolidate. That we can go from strength to strength in our each and every area of our lives. We just thank you, Father. Thank you. And Lord, we pray that even as we journey through this year, that each one of us will go to new levels, new levels of strength, to places of increase, that each one of us will go up to the next level, God. Even as we consolidate, we will see increase, we will see that going up to a higher level take place in our lives. The levels that we've not attained so far, we will rise up to those levels. Bring us, Father, to places of higher honor. Bring us, Father, to places of greater stature. In you. And I pray that 
that will take place in each of our lives. As we consolidate. Thank you, Father. Let's just get ready to close, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each one of us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here this morning. See you again Sunday. Continue to grow from strength to strength. Continue to consolidate. Amen. God bless. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also, visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.